This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Friday, June the 7th, 2019. It's the feast day of Blessed Marie-Thérèse de Subiron la Louvière. With a name like that, she clearly came from Armenia. No, it was France. She was French, born in the south near the Ode River in 1834. Her given name was Sophie Thérèse. She planned to become a Carmelite, like her namesake, but the Jesuits got in the way specifically her uncle, who was a Jesuit priest, serving in the area, and he asked her to consider forming a localized religious community for young women. She agreed and took the name Marie Therese. This is one of those things that's starting to become a reality again, and it was a giant part of our Catholic faith in the last couple centuries. Rather than joining an established order and moving away for years or forever, An enthusiastic young person with strong ties to a local priest or a bishop will establish a, quote, pious fraternity, or set up a house where a few people can live together, share a common life with a rule of life and a shared purpose. Sometimes this is a stepping stone toward joining an established religious order or going off to seminary to study to be a priest. But throughout history, these local religious communities have been a huge part of the Catholic faith. They're organic. They're agile to the will of the Holy Spirit. They can kind of change direction if they need to. And they're evangelical in a way that outside missionaries can't always be. It doesn't take anything special to get together some property, get some internal and some external leadership, and then let prayer, penance, and works of mercy do the heavy lifting. And Blessed Marie Therese did just that. There was drama and there were challenges, but the Lord used her little community to great effect in her local area. She was beatified in 1946 by Pope Pius XII. Today in 1909, Virginia Apgar was born in New Jersey. She was by training an anesthesiologist who specialized in obstetrics, so childbirth. And from early on, though, she was interested in what is called teratology, or the study of abnormal anatomy. These interests came together to make her a real leader in neonatal care for newborns with poor health conditions. Her most lasting direct contribution is why some folks would recognize her name and why she is remembered. Virginia Apgar created the Apgar Test. It's a quick way of gauging in a single number the health of a newborn. And it works by taking five criteria and assigning a point value to each one. And the criteria are an acronym of her name. A for appearance, P for pulse, G for grimace, A for activity, and R for respiration. In each category, the baby can get a zero, a one, or a two. Ten is excellent. So, for example, a newborn who has some bluish coloring on her extremities and a pulse rate under 100, but is otherwise crying and flexing normally, would get an 8. And what makes this great is that anyone with basic training can call out a score without the need for a long list of medical jargon in the birthing theater. It doesn't replace a formal exam by a doctor, but it provides a quick, useful informational point that a doctor can act on immediately. Virginia Apgar died in 1974 at the young age of 65, but her legacy is alive and well in helping newborns to this day. And finally today in 1862, the Lyon Seaward Treaty was signed by representatives of the United States and Great Britain. It's also known as the Treaty between the United States and Great Britain for the suppression of the slave trade. And we all know that the slave trade was not the cut and dry story we find in textbooks about the Civil War. It wasn't that the North was blameless and the South was greedy. Neither were Great Britain or Spain paragons of virtue. This treaty, though, committed the U.S. and the U.K. to stopping the trade by military force. And not just on U.S. or U.K. vessels, but everywhere. Other nations were told to stop, and if they didn't, they'd find their ships confiscated or destroyed. It was overdue, but today was the day that the slave trade really came to an end. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.